the battle of our professional lives all comes down to today. Either we heal as a team or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we're finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And we can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. One inch at a time. Now, I can't do it for you. I'm too old. I look around, I see these young faces, and I think, I mean, I made every wrong choice a middle-aged man can make. I, uh... I pissed away all my money, believe it or not. I chased off anyone who's ever loved me. And lately, I can't even stand the face I see in a mirror. You know, when you get old in life, things get taken from you. I mean, that's, that's, that's part of life. But you only learn that when you start losing stuff, you find out life's this game of inches. So is football. Because in either game, life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early, and you don't quite make it. One half second too slow, too fast, you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. Hell yeah. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that itch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that itch. We claw with our fingernails for that itch. Because we know when we add up all those inches, that's gonna make the fucking difference between winning and losing. Between living and dying. I'll tell you this, in any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's gonna win that itch. And I know if I'm gonna have any life anymore, it's because I'm still willing to fight and die for that itch. That's what living is. The six inches in front of your face. Now I can't make you do it. You gotta look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're gonna see a guy who will go that inch with you. You're gonna see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're gonna do the same for him. That's a team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team or we will die as individuals. That's football, guys. That's all it is. Now, what are you going to do?
Now, talking about Tyree Robinson, you know, I can talk about him for, for days and talk about all the accolades, all of the uh, stats that he has, his frame, 6'4", 200 pounds, his speed, he's about a 4'6 guy, you know, pretty good. He has a, a, a large frame, he is athletic. He has good ball, uh, ball ability, ball skills, things like that. He's a ball hawk. Uh, he seems to be a leader on his secondary when it comes to getting in guys' faces. I do see that. But uh, looking at this kid, he's undrafted out of uh, Oregon. The thing I don't like on tape is that uh, the kid really has a problem when it comes down to playing and run. He's like the Vander Esch of the secondary. Okay. Reason I say that he's good if he can free flow to the ball. He'll come down. He wants to hit. He's a pretty good wrap up tackler. I want to say great. I give him about a seventy or a seven out of ten on a scale of one to ten when it comes to form tackling or wrap up tackling. But when it comes to him actually having to deal with a blocker, if he can't beat you across the face, if you put a body on him, he's flimsy at best, and that is. Uh, Something I don't like. Now, maybe he can work on this. Like, he is an undrafted free agent. He's not, you know, like a high draft pick. I would be upset if we did draft him uh, with those type of uh, issues. But we didn't draft him. So if he can work on those things in the weight room, work on those things as far as technique is concerned, and gets better at those things as we move forward, then, yeah, I, I would say he, he's a good pickup. I think Chris Richard can work with him. And I think that's if you use him at corner. Um, he played a lot of cornerback, too, uh, his senior year. So if you use him at corner, he's actually good. Him as a safety reminds me of Byron Jones, to be honest with you. He's a guy that, that can help you against the pass, can line up against your tight ends, you know, can run with those tight ends, is good with good with big guys as far as, you know, physical coverage, good with rub routes, running through screens, things like that. He's good at that. But when it comes to getting off of a block and finding the ball carrier as a runner or as a screen pass or anything, he he just he does he whiffs every time um sometimes he loses his uh his his fundamentals when it comes to covering he's not always technically sound he kind of he'll get you some pass interferences here and there as well and uh you know that's going to happen that i don't really i'm not going to kill him for that but you know when it's when it's time to come down and, and and play the run i just don't like what i see uh, and you, you guys will see that as we come forward in this video, but I just don't like what I see when he, when he does it, you know, and, and that is, is not, you know, something that I think he can fix swiftly. He kind of waits for the ball carrier to get to him and waiting will get you either run over, jumped over or killed in this league. You can't wait. And, you know, you can't wait. You got to come bring the boom. He doesn't do that. He waits and he does that a lot. And, uh, you know, that's my main knock on him. Outside of the waiting game uh, and him not being able to get off of a block, you know, he's pretty solid. Uh, he's Like I said, he's solid in coverage. The question is, you know, uh, can, will his cover skills as a corner be more like a Brandon Browner who was also six foot uh, three and some change? You know, this guy's six four. I think him as a press cover defender against larger guys would be good. And I think that's why they brought him in to be like a backup to the guys like Byron Jones just in case we don't sign him but he doesn't look like he wants to get through a block or or even chase plays on the back end he got I seen him give up on a few plays man that he could have chased down you know if you have a guy that really wants to get there he doesn't have that want to you know he allows himself to get fooled a few times you know and then he, he doesn't have that want to he doesn't want to get there like on a, it was a reverse play against Washington and he could have gotten back on that play like he could have got back in position to chase that play down he didn't he just let it go and that i didn't like when i saw that and he does it a lot uh in the same game at that it's not like i had to go very far i, I actually stopped uh looking at the guy after watching that one game i didn't look at m many more because i saw enough in that game to see some of his tendencies i looked at at least two but um, outside of, you know, mo most of his, his highlight games, his, good, his better games where, you know, he's playing pass-heavy offenses. When he plays a pass-heavy offense uh, and not a, sm a smash-mouth type offense, he played pretty good because he's good in space, you know, stuff like that. But uh, when, he, when he plays a rushing team, and if we're ever playing, and you know we're going to be playing Darius Juice, or Geis, I'm sorry. We're going to be playing Geis. We're going to be playing the Eagles with Ajahi. You know, we're going to be playing guys that like to run the ball. We we got we we now have uh, Saquon Barkley in the division as well. Two of the top two the top two running backs in the draft are in our division. 
okay and though and in our division we have some of the better offensive lines now in the division you know the redskins always had an okay offensive line uh the eagles offensive line is good they're solid uh and now the giants you know they have nate salter they have will hernandez i can stop there you know so these offensive lines are, are houses we need guys that that are not afraid of contact now again him as a corner Tyree Robinson as a corner, I, I'm not, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blow him up on these plays because he's a corner. You know, he plays rough enough to be a corner, but he doesn't play quite as well as a safety. I don't like him as a safety at all. If we put him at safety, it's situational. Third downs where you need somebody that's out there that's rangy who can, you know, slap some balls down, stuff like that. Uh, maybe pick some passes off. Cool. But his lapses in focus make me look at him like he's going to have one of those but he's, he's like the butt fumble guy of the defense sometimes you know and, and he, he he lapses when it comes to his focus and concentration i think that washington game says it all because he personally i mean personally you know i know football is a team sport but i can name four maybe five touchdowns maybe four touchdowns that he personally could have stopped and he didn't do anything so with that, I don't I don't really like that. Now I'm not gonna say I don't want the kid on our team because again, like I said, he's an undrafted free agent and maybe he's looking at his own film and but we'll see. But maybe he's looking at his own film to kind of understand whether or not, you know, there's something that he, he needs to do to to improve. But uh you can see like he, he uses the wrong shoulder quite a bit on a few plays and he just lets guys just run right through him, pass them all around him. And that's all day, you know, and I don't like seeing that. He needs to get better at that. But again, like and subscribe if you guys like the video. Um, I don't need to show a bunch of his positive highlights. So don't think that this is just a bad player because I show negative highlights. It's just that, you know, when you go look at highlight film, and I'm, I'm trying to do these as fast as possible because there's so many players. Because I plan on doing not only our undrafted free agents, our, our free agents, but also our draftees. And I don't want to just go out and redo what everyone else is doing when it comes to the highlight end of it because you can see their positive plays easily. Everyone has that already. So I'll go out and I'll do plays that, that people probably aren't paying attention to. And uh, and then we can go from there. And he's somewhere, these players are going to be somewhere in the middle of their bonehead plays and their accolades, but nobody is a highlight reel. Um, again, that's why I was so high on DeQuinn Osborne, and I still am because I watch multiple games of him and I have yet to see anybody make him look like Tyree Robinson looks in this in this uh, film. So, you know, uh, thank you guys for tuning in. I'll get you guys more ASAP Rocky.